guys. Welcome to Bible Lesson 59. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Bow your head. Close your eyes. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. I thank you for each and every one of my students. I thank you for their lives that you've given to them. I pray, Lord, that you continue to help them as they make many important decisions right now um, on what they plan to study soon in the near future, how well they plan to do on their schoolwork now so that they are prepared for their future. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to um, give them patience and wisdom for doing their schoolwork. I pray, Lord, that you would also give better parents and um, all those who are taking care of them patience and wisdom to help them as well. I pray that you continue to be with those people affected by the hurricane. You would continue to provide for the needs that they have. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to find the best way that we can um, serve them and minister to them. I pray, Lord, as well, that uh, you would just be with this coronavirus as we continue to have to take a lot of measures to, to stay safe from it, Lord. I pray that you would continue to give um, doctors and the government wisdom as to how as to the best measures that need to be taken uh, so that everyone can be uh, safe and healthy. We love you so much in your name we pray. Amen. All right, our verse this week answers the question for what is peace? Remember, peace is to join with others and to become one because you don't fight with yourself. It's that idea of everyone is you know, your brother and sister kind of idea. There, God doesn't say that you have to like every single person that you meet in this life, but you have, you are supposed to care about their souls, love them in that you care for their soul and don't want them, don't want anything bad for them, but you don't necessarily have to like them. So that's where it, that phrase, uh, as much as is within you, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. So it's the idea that you don't need to be best friends with everyone in the world, but you can still live peaceably with them. You can still choose to be kind to them, still choose to, to let go those little things that maybe you would want to start an argument over, and instead you're just going to let it go, turn the other cheek, and you keep living your life happy as, as can be. So live peaceably with all men. Don't let people get under your skin and ruffle your feathers. All right, Romans 12, 17 through 18. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And as a Christian, it does lie within you if you do have that potential to live peaceably. Romanos 12, 17 a 18. No pagues a nadie mal por mal. Procurar lo bueno delante de todos los hombres. Si es posible, en cuanto dependa de vosotros, estar en paz con todos los hombres. Okay, today's homework. I know it's your favorite slide. Yay. You need to complete Doctrine 4 7. What was the punishment for disobeying God's commands? Michelle, you need to present Doctrine 4-6, Did Adam and Eve Obey God's Commands? And Oliver, you're up to prepare to present Doctrine 4-7. So the doctrine we're doing today, you need to prep it so that you can do it to, for me tomorrow. All right, let's finish up Chapter 27. We're talking about Paul's shipwreck. Paul's shipwreck. So remember, in the last... Uh, in yesterday's lesson, what we talked about, um, remember Paul was uh, taken aboard a ship um, under the command of Julius, the centurion, with a bunch of other prisoners. He's with, um, the Bible tells us he's with Luke. He's also with Aristarchus, who was with Paul um, back in Jerusalem. He had gone with Paul to take the offering to Jerusalem. He had even been grabbed by the, the mob when Paul was arrested, but he himself was not arrested. So he's going to go with Paul. He's actually going to um, be with Paul throughout Paul's entire imprisonment in Rome. So he's a loyal friend for Paul, as well as Luke, who accompanies him and is the one who writes the book of Acts. So that's why he says we and all of those things in this chapter, because he's there experiencing everything along with Paul. So they're on board this ship. Paul is treated well. He has the respect of Julius. When they go to Sidon, he's allowed to, uh, to visit with his friends there. 
but it's winter time, so this is bad weather on the Mediterranean Sea. Very heavy winds. Paul tells them that they should just stay where they were in the Fair Havens on the Isle of Crete. But no, they wanted to get to Venice. Instead, they said it was a better port. So they didn't listen to Paul, try to go there, and they, the wind pushes them off course. So they have been, um, for three days that we saw, they were struggling. They had to, they were basically tying the ship together with rope, throwing out everything that they could, including the tackling. They have given up hope. But then Paul comes in and he tells them, now I told you if you listened to me, we wouldn't be in this situation. But don't worry because God has said, God told me in a vision uh, from an angel that I'm going to get to Caesar. I'm going to stand before Caesar. And he says he's going to give me the lives of all the people with me, meaning that all of the people with Paul were going to survive. And he makes it clear to them that this message is from God so that they will know who gets the credit. Uh, when they survive this shipwreck. So he tells them, he closes by telling them, how be it, we must be cast upon a certain island. So he's telling them they're going to be shipwrecked on an island. Let's see what happens in verse 27. Verse 27 through 32. But when the 14th night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, about midnight the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then, fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern, and wished for the day. So, let's stop there for just a second. Where it says that they sounded, that means like they would they threw down a weighted rope that had different knots tied into it, and wherever the, uh, the water the, would, uh, the, the line of the wet water on the rope, stopped, that's how far down the rope had gone. And so they would um, they would pull it up and by measuring where the water line was on the rope, they knew how um, how how deep the water was. So they're trying they see that the water is getting less and less deep, so they're getting closer and closer to land. They're afraid that they're going to end up on the rocks, so they're trying to steer the ship by throwing out the anchors on the stern side. And they are wishing for the day because um, it would be easier to see in the daylight. They have been doing this. It says the, this is the 14th day. So this is for two weeks that they've been in this storm. We'll keep going with verse 30. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea, under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, Except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. And the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. So let's talk about what that is. So the ship is getting closer to land and some shipmen try to sneak off in the lifeboat. That's what it means by under color as though they would have cast anchors out of the fore ship. So they tried to act like they were going over there to throw out the anchors to help steer the ship. But really they were trying to lower the lifeboat, thinking that maybe they would have a better chance. But not everybody could get in the lifeboat. There's, I think, 276 people on this ship. That's a lot of people. Not all of them are going to fit in the lifeboat. So Paul sees that this is happening, and he tells Julius, the centurion, God said he's going to protect us. He's going to bring us through this. But listen, they have to stay here on the ship. If they don't, they're not going to get through this. So the soldiers go, and they cut off the ropes of the boat, and it falls into the water. So now they don't even have that as an as an option, but they're trusting in Paul. So there's the notes for that. I got excited and forgot to put that up for you. Okay, let's see what happens next. Verses 33 through 44. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the 14th day that ye have tarried and continued fasting, having taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. For this is for your health, for there shall not any hair fall from any head of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. And they were then were they all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship two hundred three score and sixteen souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, 
but they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded if it were possible to thrust in the ship and when they had taken up the anchors they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rubber bands the rudder bands excuse me and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore and falling into a place where two seas meet they ran the ship aground and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the wave and the soldiers counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape but the centurion willing to save paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that they would wish that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land and the rest some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land so on the fourteenth day of wandering around in the storm, Paul told them to break their fasting. They hadn't been eating this entire time. They hadn't taken time to prepare food. They'd been afraid. Some of them maybe were fasting for religious reasons. But he told them, hey, stop your fast. No one's going to be harmed. And they're also going to need their strength to swim to shore, to be able to, um, to cling to the, the boards for some of them in, in, uh, when the ship gets broken up. He knows that in the very near future, they are going to need their strength to be able to, to survive this. So they need to eat something. And notice that um, when he, when he uh, tells them to, take, to eat something, they're all listening to him. So Paul has really gained the respect of everyone on this ship. It says that he first gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. So Paul continues to show them who's in control, who they have um, to to be grateful to for their very lives. And so um, he gives thanks to God, breaks it and eats. And following his example, they're all happy. They all take some, some food and then they eat themselves. I'm sorry, they don't eat themselves. They eat the bread. They themselves eat the bread. There we go, sorry. Um, then they end up grounding the ship. So, they throw out as much as they can, including the wheat, which is what they use to make food. So that was a leap of faith for them. They threw out what they would have to eat because they had faith that everything was going to turn out all right, that they were going to be saved from this. So they throw that out, ground, and they ground the ship because it's sitting. Uh, they The idea of throwing out the stuff is to make it rise up as much as possible out of the water so it can get as close to land as possible before hitting the ground. Now it does hit the ground and the front of the ship sticks fast, which makes the back of the ship break apart. So the soldiers, they want to kill the prisoners for fear that the prisoners might escape. And if the prisoners escape, well, according to Roman law, if that happens, then the soldiers are killed in their place. They don't want that to happen, so they want to kill these prisoners. Now Julius, he has really grown to, to care about and respect Paul. And so for Paul's sake, he does not allow them to kill any of the prisoners. He says, those who can swim, swim to shore. Those who can't swim, you know, grab, grab a piece, broken piece of the ship, whatever you can find, and float and paddle your way towards the shore. So everyone escaped to this island, either by swimming or by clinging to those broken parts of the ship. And everyone was safe, just as God had told Paul. Paul had told them. Now, it's very interesting. One thing I want to point out before we close this lesson. God had promised that they would be safe, but there was a little responsibility that they had as well. Because when Paul told them, when Paul told the centurion, except these abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. He's saying that, yes, God's promised to protect you, but you have to obey him. You have to do what you're supposed to do. God promises to protect us, to, uh, to be um, uh, guarding us, but we also have to be walking in obedience to him. If we purposely choose to put ourselves in a place that is not safe or in a place of rebellion against God, then while, yes, he has the power to protect you, he may not actually protect you because you're choosing to go against uh, what his desire is for you. So you have to walk, you have a responsibility to walk in obedience to God. And that's a, a very important thing to understand from, from this. So in tomorrow's lesson, we are going to see what happens with 
Paul and his fellow shipmates on the island that they have landed on. So make sure you stay tuned tomorrow for that lesson. Bye guys, love you so much.